This is Faculty Focus from Fairleigh Dickinson University. In this episode, we feature Dr. Catherine L. Loeb, Associate Professor in the School of Psychology and Associate Director of the PhD Program in Clinical Psychology at FDU. Her area of expertise is the prevention and treatment of eating disorders and obesity in the context of the family. Um, a big misconception is that it's caused by parents and by families that it represents some form of family illness. Um, another misconception is that an anorexia nervosa, for example, is often misunderstood as a disorder of vanity um, or a way of just achieving a very highly desirable state. Um, another misconception is that um, is that somebody could engage in some of uh, some eating disorder behaviors, but in a limited way. Obesity is not the inverse of anorexia nervosa. Um, anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa are psychiatric disorders. Obesity is a medical condition or a medical state that's associated with medical problems um, in the literature. And um, while what's interesting, what does link them is obesity, both obesity and eating disorders do tend to appear in countries where food is abundant. So there is some underlying link that has to do with food availability, but beyond that, I don't think there are common um, mechanisms of etiology or of cause. Biology plays a role, genetics play, plays a role, um, and environment to some extent plays a role. Um, and But no one variable has been identified as the sole cause of either eating disorder classifications or obesity. And so uh, what we also know is that the solution might target variables that are not directly related to the cause of obesity. So if somebody's vulnerable to obesity, we can work genetically, we could work with environmental factors to reduce the challenges in the environment. Similarly, for eating disorders, while parents may not be the cause of eating disorders, and we really believe that they are not, they can certainly function as a resource in the recovery from the illness. The warning signs of eating disorders include um, a lot of dietary restriction and rituals around food. So a child might start eating a, a, an overall um, lower quantity of food, as well as going for long periods of time without eating, um, or trying to avoid particular types of foods. There might also be rigid rules um, around eating or rituals, such as cutting food to a certain in certain small bites, um, eating uh, a bite every few minutes um, to try to reduce caloric intake. Uh, other signs and symptoms include weight loss. Um, disruption in menses for young girls who have already started to get their period. Um, there are also signs of purging that parents might notice, such as um, even if it's denied by the adolescent, there might be a residue of vomit found in the bathroom or an odor of vomit found in the bathroom, laxatives missing from the cabinet. Sometimes there can be callus and scarring on the back of one's hand from, from self-inducing vomiting. Um, there's also a lot of mood problems that co-occur with eating disorders, so knowing that observing somebody become isolated or depressed in conjunction with a lot of dietary restriction would be another warning sign. FBT stands for family-based therapy, and it's also known as the Maudsley Method because it was developed at the Maudsley Hospital in England. And it um, is still a controversial treatment in that Traditional approaches to eating disorders have posited that an eating disorder represents a maladaptive attempt at autonomy and control, meaning a way for the child to say, I'm in control of something that you can't dictate. Um, and so by extension, the treatments that have been recommended by traditional therapies have been to remove parents from the picture and ask them not to be involved in prompting their child to eat. So if their child is underweight, to feed them an amount that is reasonable for their state of starvation. Um, and to help their children regulate their eating habits until they're well enough to start taking more of that control back themselves. 